What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I am Pitchy Ninja, and I'm here. Will Leahy. What's happening, Will? Ninja had a great night watching a tall hunk throwing junk, and uh, I'm sure we'll get into that, but you must have enjoyed the, the show last night, huh? Wait, who are you talking about? Well, I'll, I'll give you a hint. He, he looks like Killian Murphy, and he's about a foot taller, richer, and a better athlete. Oh, you must be talking about my man, Tyler Glass now, destroyer of worlds. And we'll get to that in a bit. We're going to start the whip around the league with Martin Perez, who had seven strikeouts and eight innings, giving up one run on six hits and no walks. He had these cutters, this front door two seamer, and these curveballs. This is longest outing in about two years. He faced off against Casey Mize, who had two strikeouts and five innings, giving up two runs. Mize's fastball was up to 98 miles an hour. His velo overall was up a couple of ticks. And he had these wicked splitters. Here's an overlay of his fastball and splitter. You can see why Mize is going to be trouble. Corbin Burns had six strikeouts in seven innings, giving up one run on two hits. He had these sliders, but his cutters were the story of the game. I thought his cutters were outstanding yesterday. He was getting a little extra movement on them. Look at the movement on these cutters, especially this one at the bottom of the zone. And here's a cutter two-seamer overlay. And you can see how they start in the same tunnel. And they end up going in different directions. Faced off against Brian Bayo, who had three strikeouts and five and a third innings, giving up three runs, and this changeup and slider. Joe Ross had seven strikeouts and six and a third innings, giving up two earned runs, and I thought he looked really good. He had these wicked sliders, picked up a sword on his slider. He faced Frankie Montas, who had four strikeouts and five innings, giving up three earned runs, and this painted two-seamer. Michael Soroka had four strikeouts and three and two-thirds innings, gave up four runs, had this front door two-seamer that ran 18 inches, as well as this nasty changeup. And he faced Logan Allen, who had four strikeouts and four innings, but gave up five runs thanks to a horrible first inning. He did have this changeup, fastball, and sweeper. Merrill Kelly had four strikeouts and six innings, giving up two runs. He had these sliders and picked up a sword on this slider and had this changeup for a sword. He faced Cal Quantrill at six strikeouts and six innings, giving up three runs, and had this splitter. Aaron Savali had four Ks and five innings, giving up two earned runs. He had this elevated cutter and this wicked sweeper. He faced Patrick Sandoval, who had six Ks and five innings, giving up four runs, and had this painted two-seamer and slider. Nasty Nate Evaldi had eight strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings, giving up one run, and he is looking really good this year. He had these fastballs, curveballs, and these nasty splitters. He had eight swings and misses on his splitter and seven on his heaters. Just a really good outing from Nate Evaldi. And here's a picture of him looking really good with me at the All-Star Game a couple years ago. Coincidentally, he faced Alex Wood yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Who had two strikeouts and four innings, giving up two runs, and had this painted two-seamer. Carlos Rodon looks solid again with six strikeouts and six innings, giving up no earned runs. Had these heaters, these sliders, and this changeup. And again, he is looking like vintage Carlos Rodon. He faced A.J. Puck, who had two strikeouts and four and two-thirds innings, giving up one earned run. And Puck had this White Castle special. Chris Bassett was freaking outstanding yesterday with eight Ks and six and two-thirds innings, giving up one run. He threw 115 pitches, which I believe may be the most pitches thrown by any pitcher in April in the last three years. I'm making that up. I think I heard that. Could be true. It sounds true to me. He had the sinker, this elevated cutter, and these splitters, including the splitter for a sword. And I thought his splitter looked really good. He faced George Kirby, who did not look really good yesterday. Second straight eh, outing from him with three Ks and four innings, giving up five runs. He did have this painted 97 mile an hour fastball. And I had this three pitch overlay of this three pitch strikeout that he had all of them being painted heaters, which I thought was pretty nasty. But overall, I thought he had a tough time putting away hitters. Get to two strikes, and then didn't have anything to put him away with. I don't know if he was tipping pitches. I have no idea what it was. His splitter didn't look really good, which can be a really good out pitch for him. Made me a little bit nervous about the way Kirby was throwing because his fastball velo was there, and his command was there, but his out pitch seemingly wasn't. 
Reynaldo Lopez was really good yesterday with six Ks and six scoreless innings. He had this 97 mile an hour heater and these sliders and picked up a sword on this slider. Ben Brown had five Ks in four and two thirds scoreless innings. He had this 97 mile an hour fastball and these knuckle curves. And he faced Joe Musgrove who had five Ks in four innings, giving up four runs. At the beginning of the game, I thought this was going to be a big game for Musgrove. I thought his curveballs looked really good. I mean, look at the drop on these things. And he also had this nasty cutter. Cole Reagans had five strikeouts in five innings, giving up three runs. The biggest thing about Reagans this game is I thought he fought his balls off. <laughs> well said. He kept his team around, even though he didn't have his A-plus stuff. He did have these fastballs, curveballs, and change-ups. But the big thing was gutting it out. But really impressive stuff from Cole Reagans. He faced Christian Javier, who had four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two earned runs, and had this elevated fastball and this slider. Kyle Harrison had eight strikeouts in six innings, giving up three runs. I thought his fastball looked electric yesterday. I mean, look at these heaters. And he also picked up a K on this changeup. He faced Yuan Adon, who had two Ks in four innings, giving up one run, and had this wicked two-seamer. Sonny Gray made his first start of the year. Picked up five Ks in five scoreless innings and looked really good. He had these sliders, this knee-buckling curveball, and this cutter. And he outdueled Zach Wheeler, who had five Ks in seven innings, giving up three runs. And the story of the game for Wheeler were his splitters. His splitters were nasty. And here's an overlay of his fastball and splitter. And you can see why that splitter is a big pitch for him. In fact, he just added the splitter this year. And he seems to be falling in love with it. And I fall in love with it, too. Louis Varlin had six Ks in five innings, giving up six runs and had this fastball and cutters. And he faced yesterday's starting pitcher of the day with undoubtedly one of the greatest outings you're going to see this year. Tyler freaking Glasnow. Glasnow had 14 strikeouts, no walks in seven innings, giving up only three hits. And he had those 14 strikeouts on only 88 pitches which is the fewest pitches for 14 strikeouts or more since we've been tracking pitch counts. He had these fastballs, including this painted 97 mile an hour heater, these hammer curve balls with a spin rate up to 3,010 RPMs, and these sliders up to 94 miles an hour. He is just ridiculous when he's on like this. Here's a fastball curveball overlay. Actually, I'll give you a couple of them. And look how well that curveball tunnels with the fastball. And by the time you're making up your mind to swing, it's too late. And then check out this three slider K sequence. 92, 93, and 94 mile an hour sliders consecutively. And I overlaid them. And this is ridiculous. This reminds me of the overlay from Jacob deGrom versus Freddie Freeman from a couple years ago. The glove side slider, disgusting. Just a freaking outstanding effort from Tyler Glass. Now, when he's on like this, I don't know how anybody can hit him. Now, one of my filthiest relievers, Adbert Alzali had this slider. Ryan Stanek had this 100-mile-an-hour heater. Danny Coulomb had these hammer curveballs and painted two-seamer. Clay Holmes had this filthy sweeper. Ryan Helsley had this 101-mile-an-hour gas and this slider. Abner Uribe had this filthy 99 mile an hour sinker and slider. And Jojo Romero got out of a bases loaded jam with these two Ks and got absolutely freaking fired up. Inject this into my veins. I love myself some Jojo Romero. My top five filthiest pitches of the day yesterday. At number five, I have Sonny Gray and this knee buckling curveball. At number four, I have Corbin Burns' cutters. At number three, this absolute paint from Mason Miller at 101 miles an hour, just sick stuff. At number two, is Michael Kopech turning himself into a human flamethrower, striking out the side with 100, 101, and 102 mile an hour heat. And at number one, we have everything that Tyler Glass now throws who else could be number one? The man is a freaking machine. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. Find yourself somebody who loves you as much as Corbin Burns loves catching pop-ups. 
Sawinski pops it up. Omar Narvaez trying to find it. And it'll be Corbin Burns who's right behind him to make the catch. And he's sprinting <laughs> into the dugout. <laughs> and right. Oh, he's got it. Okay. He so. said, you know what I mean? He goes, it goes in or out. And you don't know until the last second. Well, then that ends. Mustakas pops it up a mile high. A roof scraper. Who wants it? Who's calling? It's Burns. Uh oh. We got free snow cones on a Sunday. How about that? I mean, that's the second time we've seen Corbin do that. My picks of the day today are a three leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Logan Gilbert for 5Ks or more, then take Jordan Hicks for 5Ks or more, and top it off with Bobby Miller for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?